Hello, and welcome to the section of the differential equations tutor. Uh, here we're going to work another problem with, uh, that involves variation of parameters. And in this case, it's going to be a little different because our equation is going to involve a trig function. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to handle that system of equations when we get down that, to that point. Let me show you how to handle that. So the uh, equation that we have is second derivative plus 1 operating on x is equal to secant t. Now, not only is it a trig function here, it's an ugly secant. I mean, that's just not my favorite one. Right, now notice that you do have constant coefficients in your equation, but the right-hand side, there's no way we can find any kind of annihilator for that. We just don't even know how to do that. So we definitely need to use variation of parameters. All right, so notice it's already in standard form. That's very important. There's a one here. So we don't really need to do anything here. So I'm just going to label this in for non-homogeneous. And uh, the next thing we need to do is uh, solve the uh, related homogeneous version. So the homogeneous version would be d squared plus 1 operating on x is equal to 0. We just take the right-hand side, throw it away. Now, we know how to solve these guys. It's very simple, actually. So what we'll have is r squared plus 1 is equal to 0. r squared is equal to negative 1. r is equal to plus or minus i. So h of t, we can write down right away, since we know these roots, is constant 1 cosine of t plus constant 2 sine of t. Constant 1 cosine of t plus constant 2 sine of t. We've done this so many times I don't really even feel the need to explain it, but basically you know the 1 comes and jumps into there and the 0 is the real part so you have an e to the 0 t and e to the 0 t out there so it doesn't really show up. So this is what we call h of t. It's half the solution. Now for variation of parameters we're going to presume that p of t, that the particular solution that we have is going to be exactly the same form, except we're going to make these constants vary with time. Plus C2 of T sine of T. All right, so we're going to make those guys solve or vary as a function of time. Now, we could take and we could plug it in here and we could set it equal and all that, but the dirty work has already been done, you know, over the years in, in, in the math books. Basically, what you do is you form the following system of equations. You write this down again, except the constants have derivative marks on them. Of t cosine of t plus c2 prime of t sine of t. And the first equation is always equal to 0. Next, we take a derivative underneath. The c1s and the c2s stay exactly the same. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I'm going to put a negative out front here and make it sine of t plus uh, c2 prime of t. The derivative of sine is cosine of t. And since this is a second order uh, system, I'm only going to have two equations. The bottommost equation is going to get whatever is on the right-hand side of the equal sign, secant of t. So these are the system of equations that I have, and I need to be able to solve them for c1 prime and c2 prime. Um, however, you're probably going to run into a problem early on because usually we've been using substitution or addition or something like that or you know whatever other algebra tricks you might have to solve these guys but it's going to be very difficult to do here. You have cosines and sines. You're not going to be able to cancel these things really easily. I can't multiply this equation by something and add it here to get rid of a sign. And I can't do that here as well. So you need to kind of think outside the box like that. Occasionally a system of equations will pop up here in these in these um, in these uh, ODEs to solve that don't lend themselves to substitution or whatever. So what I advise you to do and what your book will advise you to do is use 